Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this code blog, we're going to be diving into a fancy CSS technique. I'm going to show you how you can make this outlined text that we have with a gradient on the outline. Now, I invite you to look on the web for this kind of technique because I could not find how to do this anywhere. And I came up with a really great solution that I'm going to be showing you how to do step by step. So this is some gradient outline text. And up here we have some normal outline text without a gradient. I'm going to be showing you how to do both of those in a way that actually looks nice. And look, who maybe we'll dive into how I made this at some point too. So a lot of cool stuff here. So let's get started. What's the deal with outline text? And I, I made a code pen to start to explore some techniques here so that we we can dive in step by step to how I actually accomplish this. And what you're going to see is a lot of people suggesting to use WebKit text fill. OK, so if we give the color of the text to be transparent, it'll go away immediately. So what we can try to do here is use this fancy WebKit property. Now, this WebKit property, believe it or not, has supported in all browsers. So it's not just a web kit. This is one of those situations where the uh, the um, the prefixed version of the property ended up just getting supported. It's kind of stupid, but uh, we can say text stroke and then we can give this a text stroke width as let's say one pixel and then we can copy this line and do a web kit text stroke color and tell this to be a white color. Now, this at first is going to look deceivingly good. You might look at this and say that actually looks pretty sweet. Now, granted, there's no uh, gradient on this thing, but it looks pretty good. Now, where this technique totally falls apart is when we get into anything that's not a one stroke width. And I should be honest when I say uh, this one stroke or one pixel stroke doesn't even look good in every font. It just looks decent in this font. But when we do something like 10 pixels here, you can see the problem immediately looks terrible, right? Now, granted, 10 pixels is a little much, but even with something like three pixels, what we're doing is we're getting the text stroke to go inside. Now, in Photoshop and in these tools, you have the ability to say, where does the text stroke start? Is it on the inside? Is it on the middle? Or is it on the outside? With CSS, you just get the text stroke. So you don't have a lot of options there. So if we wanted the text stroke to only be on the outside, there's several techniques that you can do this with. And this is actually kind of interesting. Uh, and so this right here is a clunker because it doesn't scale. OK, when we increase again, it's it's not the outside of the text, which is what I would prefer it to be. So let's go ahead and in that that flopped as a technique. Let's go ahead and try the next technique. So if we have color transparent here, what we can do is simulate an outline using text shadow. Now, text shadow, what we can do is start in the the top left and say negative one pixel, negative one pixel, zero pixels for spread and then the color. OK, you save this and then next what we're going to do is kind of go around in the circle. So we have the top left box or text shadow. And so then we'll want to do. If we were going clockwise, we could say one pix, one pix, zero pix. FFF and then continue to go around clockwise. We can say one pix, negative one pix, zero FFF, and then again, negative one pix, negative one pix, zero FFF. Now, the last part to making this work is that we want to go ahead and change the color now to the same color as our background, where the other one had a problem of when you made it larger or made the border larger, it didn't look right. This one has the problem of you need to kind of know your background color. And so transparent for a background doesn't work here necessarily. There might be ways around that, but this gives you kind of a little bit here where actually I think I goofed one of these up, which is why this looks a little weird. Let me even bump the size up. You can see how weird it looks the, the more I zoom this in. Um, I did mess up one of them. So we have negative one, negative one, 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 negative one. And then we need negative one, one. That should fix it. And now what we have here is a very convincing text outline. And this kind of thing does scale. So if we were to say two or three, whatever, this thing will work. Now, what's interesting, what I did is to make this a little bit less intense is what I did is I made a SAS mix in where I could just pass in how wide I want it to be. And then the variable for the color or the color itself. 
And if we take a look at that mixin, I can make sure that this mixin is available to you uh, in a GitHub gist or something in the show notes. In fact, let me even, I'm gonna create the gist right now. Create new gist, new gist, stroke. That way, if I forget to post this, you could just go to my GitHub, it will be there. Okay, so this is basically a way that we can create that shadow automatically for us. And if we take a look at the one that I'm working with in production in production and development here, if we take a look at this one, you can see that the shadow is pretty involved. So if we pop this over, <laughs> pop this open, you see negative three, negative three, and then we have another shadow, which is zero, negative three, then three, negative three, then three, zero, then three picks, three picks. So you can see here that as this thing scales up, we kind of had it to add more. So instead of just doing corner, 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 we're now having to do the corners in the sides as well with those shadows, okay? So again, I made that SAS mix-in available if you'd like to take a look at it. Now, on to the cool part, because the CSS outline stuff is fun and hard, but there's a lot of guides on how to do that. So let's talk about how we managed to do the really neat gradient. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add an after. Now, I am using SAS in this code pen, so I will be taking advantage of nesting here you by no means have to, but just be aware of that, where if I say ampersand after, then that means that we're going to be having an after pseudo element in this H1. From here, we can say content is going to be equal to just nothing. Um, actually, really quick, I'm gonna give my uh, position relative to my H1. I'm going to give the content, that's gonna get a position absolute, and then it's going to get a top of zero, a right of zero, a left of zero, and a bottom of zero, and a background of red. Why not? Just so we can have this sitting on top. Um, and it looks like, oh, since this is a, a block level element, that's why it's taking up. If we were to say display inline block, you by no means have to make this an inline block, but I just wanna show you that what we've basically done here is what we've done is we've taken in a heading, uh, we've given it a position relative and in an inline block, and we have it so that there's a red cube sitting on top of it, a red square rectangle here. And we've done that with content, position absolute, and then just positioning absolutely. Now, you might not know where I'm going with this, but I think this is a really fun little technique here. So we have this. Okay, what do we do next? Well, the next part is we get to do our linear gradient. Now, instead of red, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna copy this line right here, just for funds, right? Just, just for fun. And that way we can get yours looking kind of like mine. And so what we want here is we need a color for our accent. Let me grab a color from my color wheel. It can be all kinds of colors. We'll use a blue, okay? just for fun. So what we're doing here is we're going from blue to green, we're doing it in a linear gradient and we're doing it at a diagonal, just like this, okay? Now the last step here is that we get to use a mix blend mode. That's right, in CSS we now have access to mix blend modes and if I unhighlight this, you can see that's the ticket. The mixed blend mode is what's going to give us a nice looking gradient on this outline. Now, why is that? Well, we made our outline in white, we added our blend mode on top, and we said to darken. What that's going to do is it's going to take anything that is white and fill it with the color. And it's not going to modify this color. So this blue and green are the same as they normally would be. They're just filling in whatever white. Now, obviously this technique won't work when you have other things that are white, but if for some reason you did have the color of this text to be white as well, you'll be able to see in one second, that color just overlays itself entirely like that. So you might be thinking mixed blend mode, um, that's interesting. Maybe I haven't seen that, maybe you have. Let's go ahead and take a look at its can I use page. Because me personally, when I was uh, trying to figure out techniques to do this, I didn't necessarily consider blend modes because you think a blending mode in CSS is probably 
uh, too fancy, right? But if we scroll down and look at this, the blend mode can I use has amazing support for just basically everything that's normal. So it has support it's green across the board except for Internet Explorer. So um, that gave me a lot of confidence to say, hey, I can use this and feel confident that it's going to be supported. And just like that, we have text that's not an SVG. It's not an image. And check it out, you actually kind of get a cool thing when you highlight it, but it's not an SVG, it's not an image, we're not doing anything crazy, we're using text shadow to do the outline, and we're using a square overlaid on top of that white text with mixed blend mode darken. The linear gradient can be anything you would possibly want it to be. Turn this to red if we wanted to, just for fun. There we go, that looks very Apple, doesn't it? Yeah. Pretty neat, huh? So this is just a small little technique that I thought you might uh, like to see and learn how to do. Something that I came up with when we were doing level up tutorials that I did not see anywhere else. So if you wanna check out the code for this, check out the level up tutorials blog. We'll have the code available there. We also have the gist uh, with the SAS mix in and this code pen, which I can make available to anyone who wants it. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next level up code blog where we talk about some more excellent new features that I've stumbled upon in this new website. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next